It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. Yeah. Welcome back to Twin Galaxies Live, where every Wednesday at 9 p.m. PST, we do the comic book show. This is where we've gathered an all-star cast of comic book experts from around the web to bring you this week's comic book news, reviews, previews, and discussion. And on occasion, we'll have very, very lucky special guests. Yeah. Like tonight. Uh, we're going to do a quick round of introduction, and then we're going to get to the, the main course as it is. Um, I'm going to start on that side now. What? I know, it's weird. What? I'm just mixing it up. No, wait. I might be screwing up our tech guy. So far, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're live. This is Lucas Ackerman. He is the head of the movement that is One Million to Save Wolverine and the X-Men, a uh, page that is going strong with how many followers at this point? 31,500. 31,000. Almost, 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 yeah, almost a million. We're so close That's to a million. Almost a million. So close. That is a lot. Yeah. Save that show. Uh, follow that page to get all your X-Men news. Um, he religiously updates it because X-Men is his religion. <laughs> to, to his right. <laughs> Wig, I'm wiggling the mic pack. It's live. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to his right is Mr. Jonathan London. He is the head of his own empire, yeah. Geekscape. Yes, podcasts, okay, news, sure, right? Blogs, cool. articles. Also, the writer of several comic books. But you call it an empire, and it just gives it that implication that it's evil. Yeah. It it's really? only semi-evil. What should I call it? The Roman Empire. Was Darth Vader. Vader. Uh, Alliance. Uh, Darth Vader. <laughs> those, those the rules. I don't know what it Darth is. I'll, I'll think on that one. All right. I'll have an answer for you. He uh, also a filmmaker, Doc of the Dead, if you've seen it on Netflix. Um, my God, so many A couple things. more things. Well, now we can actually mm. talk about it, too. Can we? Uh, we let's not. <laughs> we could. We could. But we but won't. Not. We, okay, <laughs> Jonathan well, London, up and coming face to keep an eye on in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty good. In that Hollywood, right. it's good. Let's it's keep good. it rocking. <laughs> <laughs> this is Matthew Hiscox. I'm skipping on purpose because best for last. Um, which I just implied that you're not the best. I'm not. It's okay. <laughs> but Matthew Hiscox is the director of uh, Batman Death Wish, which is a viral Batman short film on YouTube. 1.7 million people. 1.8. 1.8 million views. Yeah, I saw that today. It was, it was in my suggested... Uh, you should get all those people uh, who've seen it watch, to, watch. to subscribe to his page to save Wolverine. There you go, yeah. There we go. Then you would have brought the show back. Then you'd yeah, have brought it the would show be back. back. And yep. yeah. we'd, they would be in like their fifth season. Yep. <laughs> you just need to win the lottery and then you can self-fund it. There we go. What's sad is that page... start a Kickstarter, thing. right? Or is that illegal? Because I, I, I wouldn't the have thing, the, the way things are going with Marvel, that page is going to become the million people to just bring back Wolverine. Well, There you go. Yeah. But like, which Wolverine? Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, sorry, Matt we'll also built the bat suit that's currently in the Toyota commercial that's playing in Japan for the Toyota Esquire. So that's a weird thing he did. Has anybody found the drink yet? I still want one of those. There's like a, there's like a there's drink There's an Esquire now. Batman drink in Japan. So it's the drink based on the minivan based on watching? Batman. Maybe. If you're in Japan and you're watching, there are a couple of Amiibo rares I, I need. That you can <laughs> find them and mail them to me. I only need three. Okay. Uh, Love you. I'm Jennifer Zhang. Uh, you know me from The Evil Inside, a feature film, Batsuit music video, uh, this show, which is probably the best of all the things I've done. It's probably the best thing in your week. Yep. That's saying a lot. It really is. It is. And, drum roll please. Okay. We are lucky to have Banks Boutte and Jenny Kong and David from the band Never Let This Go and they're here to talk about the Ooh. music video for Right Now which was uh, an exclusive that was premiered on the Stanley World of Heroes channel uh, just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So welcome. Hey, welcome Thanks guys. for having us. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, tell us a little bit about um, maybe how you and you and the band all got paired together. <laughs> what? John all right, you do it. <laughs> no, I like it. I no, like go it. ahead, Jonathan. That person, that person, that person. You guys made that video that was up there on that channel by that one guy. I like that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> that, was that, 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 was, that was better. I admit. That was better. Yes. That's an intro. <laughs> Well, how'd the project come together? Like, how'd you get, become yeah, a part of it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so David, who's currently on Skype, part of the channel, he's the lead singer and songwriter mm -hmm. for the band Never Let This Go. Um, he actually, and his, his band actually tweeted me about two years ago, really interested in me checking out their EP. I did so, it was a great sound. And uh, yeah, I was really excited to do a, a superhuman inspired music video 
uh, Banks and I had met and auditioned in the past and just, you know, thought it would be a good opportunity for, for us. So you got snatched up. I got snatched up straight through auditions and Twitter actually as well. Jenny yeah. hit me on Twitter. It's all about uh, Twitter. Oh, for real? Yeah. I love this. So this, this entire business was conducted over Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Social media at its best. Yeah, thank you, Twitter. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you know, I've noticed that you guys have been saying superhuman mm -hmm. as opposed to like mutant or superhero. Mm -hmm. Is that a conscious choice or? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think like what inspired me to actually, you know, I heard the song right now by the band and what I was really inspired from the songwriting and the lyrics was I was very keen to kind of present it. Uh, as almost like a, an indie short film established in like a superhero world. But I, I, I guess I say superhuman a lot more because it's, it's a very kind of grounded world rather than, you know, it being mm -hmm. too fantastical or too kind of overpowering. But yeah. And they're, they're much more human characters becoming, understanding their superpowers mm -hmm. than they are superheroes mm -hmm. understanding what they're, what they're doing. Very cool. Well, shall we fire it up, give people some uh, yeah. context for this amazingness? Um, Neo, if you would. Neo fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Are we watching the whole thing? Yes. So we want to mute. Oh, mute your mics.
cutting her hand off. Okay, unmute. <laughs> like, like, do unmute. That. Unmute. Like, unmute. <laughs> hey! Yay. Very nicely done. The that was beautiful. The entire time I was playing, Lucas was singing it. Well, right next some to of me. it, you know. Each word. Each it, word. it is. And but like Tommy Boy version where he's like, uh, uh, you know. It was good though. <laughs> we all do that. He's got some pipes. <laughs> anyway, so we got David here in Skype right now. I just wanted to ask you, like, what was the uh, songwriting process for this for the song and were you thinking of a superhuman feel for the song while writing it? Um, at first, I had anticipated more of a video at the end, you know, with that big. Um, yeah. But writing the song, I was actually experiencing uh, the after effects of a failed relationship, which I think is a common theme among people. Um, I almost feel calculus writing the song because I was set up studying and I stayed up all night working on it. And then I woke up and then got to see on my final. And then <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> hey, it's average. Uh, so, <laughs> how did the band get together? Did, were you guys, did you grow up as friends, or how did that come to be? Um, at ASU, I started networking with a lot of people. Uh, the lineup you see now is actually a new lineup. Uh, the bassist is actually our producer. Um, and the drummer is actually one of our friends out in LA, um, because our drummer was not available all the time. Uh, but, in, you know, in music, you gotta make the show go on. So, that's what we did. Awesome. Does that mean you're a Phoenix local? Yeah, I grew up in a uh, suburb about 15 minutes outside of Phoenix. Awesome. We, uh, we have, the comic book show has friends out in Phoenix. We actually go to Amazing Arizona Con every year. So if you're ever interested in checking out comic book conventions, you can feel free to swing by and do that. But it's awesome that you've got Phoenix and Los Angeles going on. How hard is it for you guys to actually get the band together and, and play? And, and do you do live shows in either locations? Um, yeah, all the band now is in, uh, in uh, Arizona. Uh, I remember actually with the Tucson, uh, which is only two hours away. But uh, yeah, we have a show Friday, so uh, we managed to keep it all together, and we uh, ended up knowing a lot. Who are, who are your musical inspirations? Uh, that's tough. For now, I have uh, Jimmy Eat World, uh, another Arizona native. Yeah. Um, solid rock band that I love. Um, I mean, a lot of, like, uh, kind of obscure stuff for some people, they think, you know, this, this is pop punk. Um, I listen to some edgy stuff like Brand New, um, which, you know, has a little bit more emotional, some, a little bit of screaming type stuff, but uh, pretty much any has really honest uh, heartfelt lyrics. Now, whose decision, who was the final decision to make it Mutants? <laughs> that was your idea? <laughs> High five. <laughs> Big X-Men fan. Uh, and oh, you're Iceman. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. well, no, he has he has uh, he has tree has killing ice powers. powers. Yeah. Tree, yeah. Yeah, tree yeah. killing ice powers. Tree preserving. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's he's a conservationist. Oh, got yeah. it. Yeah. He's on the good side. Were Were you told when filming it that hey, you're gonna have ice powers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think <laughs> we, we, we talked about that before. Yeah. Him, I mean, he keeps rubbing the tree. What are we going to put here? I guess, I guess we'll give him ice powers. Uh, well, we know. We know okay. what we'll do here. We'll he just did, freeze the tree. He did two months of mutant training before we shot the video. So. That, like, Very physically uh, demanding. No, yeah. didn't, didn't work that time. And Jenny, oh, Jenny, what was the involvement with World of Heroes? Like, what was that? Did they help cre like, produce the video? Right. And like, at what point did they come into it? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think I originally pitched a band, they were really into it. I think the thought of like a, a really kind of cool visual video, as you heard, it was up-tempo song, they were really into it. And I think uh, like, like a month later, I actually, you know, met with a couple of guys from the World of Heroes team and they just jumped on it. I think just they loved the, the creative and the idea it was like set in this kind of like comic book world. Uh, and they asked to have the premiere of it. So pretty much from, I think, pre-production, uh, production and into post. They were, they were very active and you know, giving me notes and stuff like that, which was great. David, what, uh, what label are you guys on? Um, but if, uh, the, if the kids want to like, go check out your banner, you guys are on iTunes and you have like, a band web page and stuff? Yeah, they just released uh, their latest album, Believe, on iTunes. So this is kind of to go with their first single from it. 
Well, well there were two quick things. The first one, yeah. Face Poppy uh -huh. says, somebody needs to tell you that your tennis shoes are amazing. So look at this tennis shoes, guys. Look at this. Uh, your shoes are amazing. Uh, the second thing was we had an eagle-eyed viewer, I think it was VDA Monster, who actually pointed out that in this, mm -hmm. Stan Lee has an arcade game. Yes. How did that come about? Was that as there's, part of the a World Heroes There's a couple of, yeah, there's a couple of cameos if you're eagle-eyed. Um, yeah, I, you know, again, it's, it's kind of like in this, in this kind of world, it was just really fun to just try and put a couple of like Easter egg stuff in there. So. Stanley uh, and his team, uh, they work with a, a great games developer called uh, F84 Games that just released Hero Command. It's an awesome mobile arcade brawler if mm -hmm. anyone hasn't played it yet. So. We showcased it earlier this week oh, there and everyone are. had a lot of fun watching <laughs> it. It's going um, offline in August. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> too soon. That is not, too too soon. Soon. That's not the official too line. Too soon. I'm too sorry too all you uh, <laughs> DC, right, whatever crisis. <laughs> I'm sorry. Michael Rooker had a... Uh, he was like an yep. Easter egg in it as well. A former comic book show guest, Michael Rooker was in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, he, so he's a mutant. Did it say on that paper what his powers were? He's like the boss. He's like your boss. He's like, I damn it, you let her slip through <laughs> your fingers. I <laughs> wish he was the boss. That would yeah. be that would have been great. Um, Who's the next target? It was yeah. really yeah. He was the next was target. The next, yeah. So basically, uh, Banks's character Ryan and Co. Had, you know, moving on to their next case. Um, yeah, again, I think basically I was, I was speaking to the producer during pre-production about casting and there was an opportunity to, again, just add in uh, an Easter egg. And I know Michael Rooker is like much loved from his, you know, walking dead days, but I thought, you know, who could we, if we had to pull someone out of a, an MCU kind of, you know, world, who could it be? And the producer said, let's ask Michael Rooker, he's a cool guy. Uh, as you guys know, he uh, punched me in the face when he was on the show. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we, we did it have, twice. Yeah, we have footage of that. Yeah. You know. yeah. But yeah, he, he jumped in straight away. No questions asked. So he's, yeah, he's awesome. Very cool. Uh, so in the next one, you're gonna freeze him, but it's not gonna work. So his skin's gonna turn blue. His hair's gonna fall out. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe you could call him something like Yondu. <laughs> Yandu. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Possibly. I, Banks, you play a uh, like a superhuman cop, uh -huh. and you're out yeah. here. But at no point does your cop actually go freeze. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> they, like that, that was in like, the longer. That was in the that was a longer. Okay. Period. You can't hear what they're saying. I'm really glad you guys cut that. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> 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 and the, the, the the video was was emotional enough for me. As it is, I met a girl in the arcade, and she also gave me a burning sensation. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was hard to watch the video at times. Didn't I was like, it oh. brought back memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a different how did that? How that did that go? Uh, used a little. I used a lot of icy hot <laughs> to keep the theme of the video, uh, but uh -huh. you know, good. It, it cleared up after a while. Well, speaking of burning sensations, how did the, uh, she get that fire in her mm -hmm. hands, Allison? I, I don't know. Allison, yeah. So we had. Uh, it was a three-day shoot. First day was with the band. The second day, we shot in the arcade. I was frightened for my life that no one would pay attention and everyone would just play games. But they were, <laughs> they were good. We shot that. We played a lot of games though. Yeah, there was a lot. There was an <laughs> extended lunch break, I think. Um, and yeah, and then the final day was the effects day. So everything from technic, like practical effects, which is the fire, visual effects. Uh, we had to, you know, basically shoot two different versions: one with plates, one without. Um, and, you know, for me, I, the type of stories I like to tell and the type of things I like to shoot is I've always had like a, a love affair, if you will, with visual effects, but I really want the effects to be kind of an extension of uh, the character's emotions or, you know, uh, their experience. So with her, we kind of discussed quite earlier on whether we should do it in visual effects or not. but. Uh, you know, it would have been a nightmare for the post-production team to have mm -hmm. actually s the lighting of the fire, you know, around her face and everything like that. And I think Allison just wants to play with fire <laughs> as well. So it's real. It's so it real. is real, yeah. yeah, basically, yeah. The woman on, on the hand, uh, there's a, uh, a stunt coordinator <coughs> that I worked with on the Amazon project actually came and helped me on the day. And it's like a special gel yeah. that they do and then they just light it. And wow. I think we, we took, I think, three or four takes. And, and we got it on the first one, but Allison just wanted to keep doing it. She was just like, <laughs> just keep going. Does anybody have any G.I. Joe figures I can burn? <laughs> She's a little pyro. <laughs> a little pyro. We have a question here from yes. VDA Monster. Wanted to um, inquire what your favorite 
Super. It was something like. What's uh, your favorite superpower and why? What What would you What would be your superpower and your weakness? I think oh, yeah. it was like yeah, a two-part yeah. question. And if we'll you could choose a superpower and a weakness, what would it be? And wow. we'll pose this to David as well. Yeah. Um, do you guys have opinions on this? Oh, we of course. We host the show. We've done this many times. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's if we could choose a superpower, what would it be? Um, I have one. Yeah, go. Okay. So, the superpower that I want changes every day. Like probably mm -hmm. yesterday would have been time travel. Today, <laughs> like the one, the one that I'm getting really stuck on this month is actually the idea of being able to be not only just a healer, but to be able to bring things back to life. Ooh, so not only that. mutants, not only humans, but I love the idea of bringing inanimate objects to life. Ooh, so ooh. I don't know what the weakness would be. Probably not being able to control them once. Oh, Once yeah. there's a big machine start attacking coming you. in my face, yeah. yeah. Like, Why did you bring me alive? Like you Stephen know what? King. You're like a Stephen King story. <laughs> <'Cause that's> like, <laughs> you know, isn't that like Pet Cemetery and uh -huh. uh, and Maximum Overdrive right. as a person? Like you're just making inanimate <laughs> stuff come. Oh, no. I actually just I I watched uh, Jurassic World yesterday, yeah. right? And it was a very similar premise in the sense of like genetically engineering something, bring it to life in the heaven. Yeah, would you? If you could, you. That's kind of. That's kind of. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, how, how about you? I don't. You know. I mean. I have so many things. I mean. I guess. I guess. Obviously, the ability to fly would be the one that, that comes up in my dreams. But when when thinking about Jenny's, it's so you know, pertinent to our times. I think. Um, you know, the the ability. This may be way too soft in the in the superpower world. But I I think the ability to to be an order, to be a communicator. You know, to um, to be able to give. You know. World-changing speeches and and uh, to be multiple able to languages. Thanks for sure. present. Sure. Yeah, no. to be able to be able to connect, right. you know, and, 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 and inspire people yeah. to to right. to. So to brainwashing. Grow. He said brain. Right. I think he said brainwashing. So it was like basically Jedi. Did say, did Jedi, mind uh, tricks? Jedi mind tricks. I think he said Hitler powers. Hitler powers. Did he I did say not Hitler say that. Power? That's that's yeah. not. Let's let's <laughs> let's be very specific here. Allow me allow me to amend. And uh, David's like, my powers will be to fight per Hitler power. <laughs> yeah, Perhaps I'm go. not communicating well at all. I need to get more specific. But what's the weakness uh, that comes with it? What is the weakness that comes with that? That um, they're Hitler powers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you have to gasp people yeah. listen to no, you. No, would, you would, that, that would be, it's like having, it's like an out of the bottle genie problem, right? Yeah. It's like you can convince lots of people to do lots of things right. that you think are well intentioned, but ultimately something's You can convince somebody to fall in love with you, but then they won't let up. Yeah. I right. like, like, in, like, I like, I like bucket. Bucket, bucket naked. naked, bucket naked. <laughs> that's that's not a superpower. That's the power of speech therapy. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. I choose phonics. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's the obligatory. I'm sorry, I made a Hitler reference. <laughs> yeah, part guys, of that. we're sorry. really sorry. That's terrible. I don't she know why. Kim Jong we all watched Kung Fury this Whoa. last week. Sorry, it's irreverent. pretty awesome. So it's there amazing. we go. Uh, Dave, David. what do you got? What would be your superpower and your weakness? Can you guys hear me? We can't hear. Is our Skype rocking? Uh, I think we lost him. I think it's live He's in here. the chat. It's just not for us. David, can you? Oh, oh, oh so, uh, Dave, go ahead. We couldn't hear you. We turned the audio down because, uh, you know, we mess up sometimes. It's live. But we can hear you now. Yeah. Um, I would probably choose to be able to fly just because I love to network, but I also love to travel. And if I could be in two places at once, if I could be in L.A. on the weekend, come during the week without having... 12 hours of driving, that'd be awesome. Ha! Teleportation. And the weakness that comes very, along very, with it. What about your weakness? Catching bugs in the face when you fly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might need a, a windshield power, too. Uh, but I think uh, my weakness might be just the like, sense of super ADD because I can go anywhere I want whenever I want. Yeah. It's like, where do you <laughs> want to eat? Where do you want to eat? I don't know where to eat. I'm not even hungry anymore. <laughs> you know, you ha that's just called a relationship. It's like, where do you want to go to dinner? I don't know. You choose. You choose. You choose. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm kind of hungry. How hungry are you? It's like that. Who wants the that's power every night. of a, of you, a Southwest? Gift you want to go somewhere. You just don't know where. You're right. <laughs> Twelve Banch says that uh, you know, with flying though, it still takes time. Why not teleportation? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Oh yeah. That's teleportation would be good. I, I didn't think of it that way. Uh, we're learning something every day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like how yeah, to end up in walls. <laughs> like how to end up in a wall. Uh oh. Oh, I messed this teleportation up. up. Yeah, flying, yeah. There we go, you can oh, do it with more but style. But you can teleport up in the air, start free-falling, and you know, pretend like you're flying. 
He's flying towards the ground. <laughs> did you guys did you guys hear that one that This American Life where they talked about what the personality test of asking people if they would prefer flight or invisibility and what it says about their personalities wow. based on like introversion or, in, uh, or extroversion and how uh, being invisible you want you kind of want to get away with things. You want to be able to to go places where you're not permitted. In, Rob a bank. Yeah, in, in like flying, you want to uh, sort of just kind of show off. Like neither, the of neither of them were good. It seemed like the right answer was to be like, I don't want superpowers. <laughs> I just want to be normal. <laughs> because it felt like entrapment just being asked that question and actually giving an answer. So either but way, you're a jerk. It was fascinating. In a different way. Um, I was Funny. like, no, if you're, if you're invisible, you're not necessarily creeping on people changing their bras. You can like help the police you know, catch bad guys and stuff. Whatever happened to catching bad guys? I like what superpowers are for. Changing their bra. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm gonna go from this bra to that bra. Isn't that what <laughs> girls do? I've never met one. <laughs> that last one was in an arcade and gave me flame powers. <laughs> Just don't go to arcades. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it's the moral of the story. It was a video arcade. We know you're both very, very talented, or all three of you actually, very, very talented, different ways. You have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. Um, can we pressure you to tell us some exclusives, what you have coming up. Yeah, what's next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know whether you guys know of uh, an indie video game company called uh, That Game Company. They're the guys behind Journey, Flower, and PlayStation. Oh, we love that company. Those, mo those, those <laughs> games are amazing. Good, okay. Journey's <laughs> incredible. Oh, wonderful. So I've been uh, working with those guys and that team uh, on the story of the next new project. Um, that's been good, and I'm currently writing uh, a feature and a short film, and uh, hope to do more music videos if nice. that's on the agenda. But yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's just been nice just to get this out and you know, hear uh, what people say. Is your preference music videos or like uh, what do you find is different in directing either one? Um, I'm a big mus music person, so I love gotcha. music videos, but uh, I, you know, I love, I love digital series, I love TV, I love film. I think it's just really the type of story that you want to tell and, and where the audience is, so. Right, because yeah. this one has certainly got a very strong narrative element to it. Yeah, yeah this, I mean, basically, you know, Banks and I, when we were, before we actually shot the, the video, we talked long about the backstory and everything in terms of, you know, it's the characters in the world. It's funny, you know, so, so I, I hope some of that comes through, but we, we, we made a, a whole long, long, long piece in our head about this, and we, we sort of talked about this as if it were its own series and what, um, what these characters would be doing and why on a much longer timeline than just this, this window. Um, which made this so much fun, you know. I, I've I've done a few music videos before, but this we treated, we treated like a narrative piece. And yeah, we my character would say freeze. That's was right. Was that ever discussed? <laughs> well, you know, we we actually I'm never brought that up. I, mean, I we could have used it. I mean, you know, I yeah. I missed ne out. Ne on next time, that. yeah, we're gonna you know, we're gonna need to get that. And for audition yeah. for yeah. consultants. Is, is there plans for a sequel? <laughs> We've never let this go for another. My, we, we, we gotta we gotta get Michael Rucker. <laughs> Dave, get right in. Michael Rucker is gonna be the next case. He's gonna be the next. If you get Michael, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> only Other, if, only otherwise, if. the band's breaking up. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, well, I, um, you know, I've been an actor for a long time, and I, I, uh, I really love digital series, and I love, um, I love producing. I love putting projects together, and and being part of the, the creative process of things. And I, um, I produced a movie last year called Match um, that. Uh, Sony and Panavision sponsored and it was actually the nice. the first series of its kind it was created entirely by members of a single social network and that social network is called Collaborator Interesting. Um, Collaborator with 1L.com is, um, is a social network for the entertainment industry for people that uh, want to put projects together and it's, it's software and tools for production to happen um, and so this Very was cool. actually the first series of its kind where um, I think something like 60,000 people submitted to, to be part of it. Wow. Um, and we, first what we said is um, we have the financing, we want to make a series. Um, so we got pitches and pitches and pitches for what the series would be. And we chose Match because it offered the opportunity for the most people to become involved in the project. And so, because the idea was, um, you know, as if 
each episode was an individual match out of a matchbook, nice. there's a spark that drives us to go for things that we want. And when we do go for those things, special people come into our lives. And so we, we said, okay, we're going to shoot um, seven shorts that all follow that narrative through line. Mm. And so then we got 300 scripts, um, and we chose seven of those, and then we got 900 director's pitches. Um, and then we went on a nine-city casting tour, um, and we shot in three cities. Um, we shot in Austin. Yeah. And, um, hometown, baby. Hometown, as you can see. And, um, I, you know, that project actually was, was really amazing because it was like making seven movies. Nice. Um, and we made, um, we made uh, uh, you know, a sci-fi thriller in there and a, a horror piece and a psychological thriller and an action piece and, and some coming-of-age dramas. Wow. And, um I want to do. I, I want to produce more narrative, uh, digital stuff. I b just believe that the distribution models now and the accessibility in shows like this, you know, where we can we can be reading what people are saying. I think it's just incredible what you can do. Um, and so yeah. my producing partner and I, we have another show that we're working on now that's sort of a, a hacker's piece, um, somewhere between anonymous and um, Big Bang Theory, um, nice. that's crazy. and uh, you know, cool. and the '90s hackers movie. Um, nice. Crash override. And um, I have, uh, I'm actually writing a, uh, a graphic novel. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we wanted to do. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, what does this have to do with comic books? I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, is, which is the first one I've, I've done like this because I believe that the, the format for comics translates so well to digital series. You know, if you look mm -hmm. at, yeah. you know, a seven part graphic novel series, it's essentially seven seasons if a season is a feature. Yes, right. the and episodic then, nature of mm. yeah, and then, itself very well. You know, 20 yeah. pages of a comic is an episode, and so then one season would be six episodes of that, and you just do that seven mm. times over. So you're essentially shooting you know, a movie as if it were a season. And there's your storyboard. <laughs> and then, and, it's, and precisely, you <laughs> exactly. know, and, and actually the, the guy I'm working with did storyboards for uh, the last thing I worked on. Last thing very I cool. I, I just, just the fact that Daredevil has just done so well on that. Like, I love that show so much. It's just testament to how, you know, albeit people still watching it in the TV screens and everything like that. That's a great mm -hmm. format to go rather than just it jumping straight to feature. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, would you need a soundtrack at all? This guy, David, maybe? <laughs> or are you guys cutting him loose? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> maybe get, provide some music, Dave? You'd be up for that? Yeah, I, I think we should do a whole series. Uh, we got months. <laughs> nice. And David, what's up? Uh, what's next for you? Um, well, I just recently uh, graduated college before we started this uh, new CD, so kind of scary, but I'm doing music full time, so uh, we're going nice. to be touring in the fall. Uh, we're going to announce that probably in a couple weeks. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, more music videos, hopefully. Very, very cool. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play the music video again for people who may have missed it at the top of the show here. We're going to give our guests here a chance to breathe, a short break, and then we'll be back with more comic book show. Um, I don't know if both of you want to stick around or if one of you wanted to stick around for the rest of the show. It's, I guess we'll find out after we come back. Ooh, real, 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 real quick, uh, we oh. just need to address, guys, do not be high in the chat room. Uh, as I'm saying, uh, Guru Rendell just said, Daredevil was meh. Dude, you're high. Don't be high in the chat room. <laughs> now let's watch that music video again. All right. Take us out, Neo. All right. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs>
Okay, she doesn't know. Unmute. Unmute. Do you want me to say anything about Jason Chu? Okay. Uh, oh, this one. World of Heroes. Okay. Superheroes and superheroines. And we're back from the music video, and uh, we have some exciting news about a uh, collaboration that Stan Lee's doing that Jenny's going to tell us about. Uh, yes, so uh, if you guys have been living under a rock and didn't know uh, about the YouTube uh, space, um, the YouTube space, they have a number of great studios worldwide. One uh, they partnered with Stan Lee and the World of Heroes channel to bring uh, a new campaign called Superheroes and Superheroines, I believe. Um, and they kicked off this great campaign with Stan Lee, inviting a lot of YouTube creators to kind of bring their A game to storytelling in terms of you know, superheroes and superhumans. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of creators right now developing their own kind of superhero video. Nice. Uh, last year, Guillermo de Toro did his own thing with the monsters genre, I suppose. So, uh, what does that guy know about <laughs> monsters? I know. Yeah, no. um, so clearly, you d it's a great idea that YouTube pairs with an right. icon of the industry and superheroes. There's no right. one better than Stan Lee. Yeah, so yeah. Never Let This Go, the band, will be performing at their rap party what? Uh, mm -hmm. July 1. You're all invited. Yay! Yeah. Nice. We did Ooh. stuff. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, July, July 1st, YouTube LA, I'm sure you can search more on, online about it. Beautiful. July 1st is YouTube Space LA, which is down in Marina Del Rey, right? Or Correct. Playa, yes. Playa Vista? Yeah, it's very appreciated. We're inviting the entire audience, just kidding, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do nope. it. Don't show up. No, just no, no, except, invited, except for you. Except for you. You know who I'm talking about. It's too bad. What's up, Neil? <laughs> He's like, but I'm in the oh, band. Well, I think she's. Uh, hey man, a lot of girls like She's say. swapping out. She's gonna do a quick Wonder Woman transform oh, with uh, one of our hosts. She's doing going off the screen. And we're going okay. to, but it's gonna happen on screen. Okay. <laughs> so Are she's really gonna be done. Wonder Woman <laughs> no, we're not yeah. doing the Wonder okay. Woman swap. <laughs> we would have. We would have. We wouldn't have. We might have made you spin. And then like digitally in the. Oh. Never mind. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. In my dreams. Yes, Matt. Would you? What's up? Can you? Come over and <laughs> come make this down, more man. awkward. I don't think it's actually being this close to us. I can absolutely go. Go. make this <laughs> more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. You Thank you it. so much. That's so good. There we go. Awesome. And Banks is that so? Jenny, amazing, talented director, was the word grateful. Banks she was to sit near me and then yeah, yeah, over yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go, Banks. I'm coming on down. No, you're moving so on. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering. To the marble side. Matt, can you do my job tonight? Sure. Yeah. It's just uh, we have a lot of men with a lot of buffness. A lot tonight. of nudes. I'm finding Are you bailing out too? Wider. It's a nude party. I, I'm trying to figure out what is best because otherwise it's going to get real toasty Tight? in here. <laughs> we, do the show we just can't back the, the show. We can't back the camera up anymore. Who wants so a dude party? The <laughs> All right. This guy. There you go, Matt. <laughs> this guy wants a dude party. Be me. Let's do it. So you guys like dudes? Wait, so Wes, that means you need minute. to be me. Hello, lady. I'm you, okay. Yep. So you get to introduce... Remember, yeah, remember how this works? Yeah. So guys, now that we... I'm uh, probably too tall for this. I'm, I'm imagining so that my head is going to slice off. Banks is just going to go with the flow. Cool. Can you intro me as you? Sure. Okay, cool. So we've been... 
we've been joined by a very special guest, uh, Banks Brute, who is apparently sticking on for the entire show, which is awesome. We love having new faces here on the comic book show. Thanks. But it's time for our very first segment of the night, which is... Wes, you're me. You're supposed oh, to do right. the intro. The uh, very first segment of the night, which is... The Daily Planet. This is where we give you guys the hottest comic book news up to date to now. Let's do it! Uh, Lucas, you want to well, kick us off? We'll just go down the line. Okay, so Marvel announced after Secret Wars, Marvel will feature around 60 new number one titles as part of their all-new, all-different Marvel. Editor-in-Chief Axel Alonso stressed that this is in no way a hard re reboot of the Marvel Universe, letting fans know that they have no plans throwing away decades of history. Fans were a bit up in arms when they saw that the promo photo didn't feature any X-Men or Fantastic Four characters, but later a new promo was featured, showing the Thing in a Guardians of the Galaxy suit, and not just one, but two Wolverines to be part of the MU post-Secret Wars. Lots of changes coming in the pages. Mm. Stay tuned. How do you feel about that, Lucas? Uh, two Wolverines? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two thumbs. Two thumbs up. Coincidence? And don't freak out, because you know like Johnny's part of the Inhumans. You know, like he's part of that, that it's going to be fun. Uh, Got it. Uh, but here's some sad news. Constantine is no more, according to executive Aww. producer Daniel Cerrone. Uh, yeah, he revealed that the cast and writers of the show have sadly been released from their contracts after trying to find a new home. It didn't pan out. We're sorry, Constantine fans. I love that show, but it's uh, gone to hell. Okay. Mm. Me? I'm yeah. Right. The third guy. Oh, are we just yeah, go okay. for it. Right. Ru rumors flooded the internet that action star Jason Statham was up for the role of Bullseye for season two of Daredevil. Best news ever! Best news ever, though coincidentally the deal fell through right around the time that it was revealed in an interview that Jason claimed anyone could do a Marvel movie. He said, I could take my grandma and put her in a cape and then put her in a green screen and have my stunt doubles come in and do all the action. Anybody can do it. He goes on saying they're, they're rela relying on stunt doubles and green screens and $200 million budgets. It's all CGI related. To me, it's not authentic. I hope that was worth it, Jason. Do you know uh, uh, Mark Ruffalo just responded to this comment? Yeah, no. can you, uh, I didn't read it. Like, kind yeah, of paraphrase what he, what he said. He's basically like, yeah, Jason's a featherweight. I could take him any day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say something no, like, what's wrong with like the complete opposite. He said featherweight. He's a featherweight. What what did he say? He said that According Jason could take him. No, 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 no. You need to read that comment. Again. Yes, so the Hulk again. is calling you out, okay. Cockney. I would take I would take Jason Statham over Mark Ruffalo, but I would take the Hulk over Jason Statham. Like right? in it, like you would date them? Or? No. But it's it's uh, it's interesting being, I, mm. being what an actor Mark Ruffalo is to come out and, and speak yeah. to Jason Statham and be like, this is Let's serious go, acting. Bro. It's legit acting. It, yeah. I mean, especially if you watch, you know, Avengers, the first one, Mark Ruffalo kills it. In oh, that my movie. God, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Yeah. So How's he it's not pants? necessarily all CGI related. Well, I think what it did reveal is that Bullseye is going to be in Daredevil Season 2, which we kind of knew, but Secret's now out. we can figure out yeah. who we want him to, to play. Who, well, if you could cast anyone, who would you play? Or who would you put? Um, you know what? I always liked the idea of Jason Statham, but he... he um, Damn, that one is hard because obviously, like my favorite actor for Frank Castle was um, Frank Grillo, who's already playing Bullseye. God, I but, do love Frank Grillo. Um, we're gonna have to get back to Bullseye, you know, like, but, but I, I, no. come on, come on now, it's a Punisher movie. Uh, <laughs> Protos Musketeers chiming in saying, "Give Ant Man Iron Man suit. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Give Ant Man okay. Iron Man suit. Let's do it. Right. Two hundred million dollars. Like yep." Well, we, we actually still have David in Skype as well. Uh, David, what do you think? Jason Statham, would he have been good in the Marvel Universe, or did he did he screw up a pretty good opportunity here? Um, well, his strength isn't necessarily um, dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that Stanley said that he went out of the box and he really likes dialogue, so uh, Jason would have failed in that category. It would have failed. Fair. In the dialogue category. It would have failed. It would have been cool with Bullseye. I mean, Bullseye... Also, well, could Jason Statham do a voice besides British? No, Jason no. Statham voice. I liked him as the like like. I remember when I first moved to LA, I was meeting with a uh, story executive, and I said Jason Statham would be awesome as the Punisher. This is before like th the whole Thomas Jane thing. That's how old I am, and uh, and he go in in this this executive was like Jason Statham cannot lose his accent, and that's like held his career back, hmm. is that he just can't lose his accent, so. Uh, if you're going to get him as Bullseye, you're going to get a British Bullseye. Yep. <laughs> well, Wiggles points out, if I could uh, cast Jason Statham, he would be the quiet guy in the back. Hmm. Okay. I think he's a badass, but... 
We're just gonna have to find another badass to play Bullseye. It's, no, it's cool. We still have Colin Farrell. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Okay. More news. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you guys won't have to wait too much longer to see the new Supergirl show, if you haven't already. Uh, I still haven't actually at all. But I see, uh, I see the trailer and it looks just terrible. Um, they announced that they're keeping their Monday, uh, Monday slot at 8, uh, even though they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with DC's Gotham over at Fox, and the premiere will be on October 26th. That's also the date. That's when S.H.I.E.L.D. was on, too. Or S.H.I.E.L.D. Tuesday was on. Like Tuesday. Tuesday is at okay. 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so... Or 8. I just remember because my DVR is like, we can only record two things at once, and you got multiple comic book shows. <laughs> and I come home, and my wife is like, I can't watch what I want to watch because there's two comic book shows taping. And I'm like, welcome to the Geek Golden Age. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's all for me. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> world. <laughs> you didn't get your head pounded in in high school. <laughs> I did. Now I'm good at recouping sure. everything. You earned it, bro. I earned yeah. it. You didn't. You were popular. I'm, I'm, now just, <laughs> I'm now just imagining Tuesday nights turning into Thunderdome in, yeah. in your yeah. living room. And I gotta tell you, Wes, every single person I know who did watch that leaked Supergirl pilot yeah. says it's effing awesome. Is it good? Everybody I know who's seen it says it's awesome. Okay, so the Devil Wears Prada thing? That's Let's do it, baby. Yeah, no, it, like, we've told it you it was good. Like, yeah. all the bad stuff is in the trailer. Everyone okay. says like, it's Western awesome. Like, it, I'm a Marvel guy. I watched it. It's good. All right, cool. I'm excited. I'm in love with her already. Bring it on. And all right, she's well. Hot. She's hot. Uh, Hugh Jackman may say that he's left the role of Wolverine behind for other film opportunities, sorry, but Lucas. here at the comic book show, we've learned the real reason. It's for food. <laughs> he wants to be fat. He does want to uh, be fat. The Oscar-nominated actor says, I don't know how many more egg white omelets I can eat. Hugh also stated recently that Fox is probably already on the hunt for another actor to fill his shoes as we speak. Me. Hi. Get hey, Lucas uh, in there. He went to the gym once. I did. How, how was that? Actually, no. I, I've never been to a gym. Yeah, surprising. <laughs> I've never. Surprising. Yeah. I've been uh, to a fitness center. Does that count? <laughs> sort of. Was it to look at girls? He's like eating no, a no, hamburger no, or looking at the window. It was like late at night when no one would be in there to watch me work out. Sure. So. Uh, well, did you guys also hear that Jerry Seinfeld uh, influenced <laughs> yeah, Hugh Jackman? I heard that. Because he said uh, Jerry Seinfeld was like, ah, I can't do Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld was just like, do barely do less. I can't do a me. I can't do a me. Um, he said, yeah, go out on top, just like I did. And <laughs> sure, Jerry. And, uh, and, and Hugh Jackman was like, that's a good idea. I'm going to go out on top with X-Men Wolverine origins. I, I wonder <laughs> if, if Aronofsky had directed that one, would he still be doing it? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 bet he, I bet he changes mind. I think he would. Because not taking uh, counsel from uh, Seinfeld. I think. I mean, James Mangold's a pretty awesome director, though. At the yeah. same yeah. time, um, He's a cool guy too. But yeah, Aronofsky would have brought something You like the Wolverine, unique. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. cool. All right. Chunks Brian T out a window. <laughs> Who what? hasn't wanted to chunk what's, Brian T out a window? What's? I'm uh, kidding. He's a former comic book show guest. No. That he's gonna be. The Wolverine 3. He's going to be the it's, Wolverine. It's right okay. now Wolverine 3. It's going to come out in 2017. Snicked. It should be called Snake. Right. It should be called Snake. <laughs> it should be called Wolverine oh Snake. No, take out Wolverine, take out everything, just Snake. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's it. like the Dark Knight for Wolverine Snake. That's cute. Okay. Uh, you get the next scenes. Yes, I do. So Marvel Studios announced that when you go see, uh, go see Jurassic Park in IMAX theaters this weekend. Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Oh, yeah, it does say Jurassic World. I said no, Jurassic Park. Park. Okay. Uh, well, when you see Jurassic World this weekend in IMAX theaters, you'll also be able to see a six-minute preview of Ant-Man before its uh, July 17th release. Don't miss it, or wait a few hours until it gets leaked online. Um, or just wait another month shit. and watch the movie. Yeah, I don't want to see six. <laughs> I don't want to see six minutes <laughs> of Ant-Man. You know what? I'm tired of all that stuff. Yeah. I don't want to see six minutes of yeah. Ant-Man. Well, I don't, don't want to see. I don't want to see the Supergirl I agree. Like, pilot. I want to just agree. watch it when just it's watch supposed it. to be wa like watched. I, I don't know about you guys, but I did so much work not looking at any Avengers two crap before I saw the movie. I'm like, sorry. Like, Clip eighty four. Watch four. Have a coffee. I probably made it really tough. On yeah, you were awful. I'm sorry. And uh, most things you do. But like stuff like this, this is for people who don't know about Ant Man. And sure. Like sure. are up in the air whether or not to see it or not. I understand so. that. that. That's, that's an what interesting trailers point. are. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that's what wait, just, just more trailers content. are. Well, yeah. that's you what see commercials and posters and regular trailers are. Well, well, you, 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 know they, you, know, you know what they really didn't it's know for about? The going to see Jurassic they also World. really didn't know about the third highest grossing American release last year, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. They didn't have a six minute preview for that movie. Yeah. And it was number one at the box office almost the entirety of the year after it came out, and was only beat at the very and in 2015 by right. American Sniper in Hunger Games. So, yeah. like, you don't need these six-minute previews, guys. Agreed. Make the movies well. People are going to go see it. Michael Douglas is in the movie. My mom is like, Michael Douglas, I'm going to go see that movie. My mom doesn't sound like that at all. 
Just letting you know. <laughs> David, what do you think? Are you going to go watch uh, Jurassic World and catch the six-minute preview, or would you rather just watch the movie when it comes out? Just the best previews kind of ruin it for me. I get ideas and then the movie's different. Yep. Totally. It's, like, yeah, it's just an expectation. I thought like Showgirls, Showgirls was going to be like, never mind. Well, Citizen it's not Kane. for everyone. It's going to be our for generation citizen. Um, think, think piece. So actor Ron Perlman, you guys know him as Hellboy, but this is related, so hang tight. Okay. Uh, he took to Twitter to rally the fans in support of a Hellboy 3. He tweeted, Anybody out there want to see Hellboy 3 as much as I do? Let's get this motherfucking trending, y'all. Let's end the trilogy. We earned it. Though the Hellboy films were never really blockbuster juggernauts, fans have always enjoyed the films and have been eagerly waiting for the third installment. Will it happen? Well, it could. Let your voice be heard by, with the hashtag, hashtag Hellboy 3. Not the... Roman numerals. Ro so Roman I, numerals. I, I, I. Yeah. Yep. Like a Super Bowl. We know what that is in the... Comic book show. I would like what is that? to see a conclusion. Is that like a Super Bowl that you eat from? Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. I, you know, I'll go see a Hellboy movie. Uh, I love the Hellboy movies. Telebro says Hellboy can go away. But okay, Hellboy can okay. go away. Well, Te Telebro's a hater bro today. Oh. Oh. I don't know what's up with Telebro. Yeah. Bro, you're, you're broing yeah, out, he's, bro. He's right here. He's, he's all in the dark trying to stay. You here. tell <laughs> you, you tell him mad, bro? <laughs> <laughs> You know what my favorite thing about Hellboy is? Is everybody thinks that Thanos is Hellboy at the end of <laughs> the Avengers. I was like, is that Hellboy? <laughs> my mom was like, is that, is that guy who was on Sons of Anarchy? I'm like, no. Also uh, doesn't sound like my mom. I can't right. my mom. The six well, minute no, Ant-Man teaser is for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I can see the resemblance. Well, yeah. guys, this has been the end of the 55 minute sneak preview of the comic book show. Be sure to tune in next <laughs> Wednesday where we'll give you another six minutes. No, no, no. You've got, we've got, got more news, news, right? He's got yeah, some great news. Guys. We, we got some more news. He's excited about this one. I'm super excited. Say there, it. there have been rumors of The Punisher being a part of the Marvel Netflix universe. Marvel wasted no time with the character revealing he's going to be a part of season two of Daredevil and be played by the Walking Dead actor John Bernthal. Season two is expected to premiere on Netflix sometime next year. You oh. said they're rumors, I say they're fantasies. Yeah, I'm very they're excited they're to have the fun. Fantasy. fantasy. I, like uh, that. I think this is great. It's awesome. He, he looks like the Zack version of the character. He looks like the John Romita Jr. version of the character. Oh, yeah. Like, he just looks, because he's got yeah. that busted up nose. It's like, like he's got that thick nose. Very if square. you guys saw Mob City, I thought that was a great little miniseries, Mob City. Mm -hmm. I thought that he was awesome in that. If you watched Fury, he's incredible in Fury. As a character you're, you don't really like, but he's a phenomenal actor. Yeah. I'm Love excited. Walking Dead. All right, Wes, bring okay, us Okay, so closing out the news for the night. Uh, it's official. It was rumored a couple couple months ago, but it's, a, uh, it's officially official. <laughs> Marvel, Marvel Studios is skipping Hall H altogether this year at Comic-Con, giving Warner Brothers the opportunity to come in and swoop and steal the show, which is not going to happen. Uh, don't, count, don't count Marvel out altogether, though, as they are expected to have a huge presence on the floor and in other panels. Also, don't count, on, uh, uh, count out Marvel's, uh, oh, shit. Fox's, Fox's Marvel's movies as well, like Deadpool. <laughs> you're excited about that one. Hell yeah! Uh, and also, Marvel Studios, you're going to catch them at D23, which is owned by Disney, and they'll have Star Wars there. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, they're, they're saving their stuff. And, and that's, yeah. an, that's in August, so you don't have to wait that long. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I heard also that they don't have anything to show in time for San Diego. So I, they're, I, they're, they're the filming thing. right now for Civil War. Okay. They're not going to have any footage ready until August. August, D23, hello, anyone? Yeah, yeah and I don't, I don't think Feige needs uh, Comic-Con anymore. They, they released the whole Phase 3 thing, uh, unbeknownst to anyone, at El Capitan right. in yeah. Hollywood. Like, they at the spur of the moment, they, yeah. they like gave people like a two-day notice. Say, hey, come here, and we got an announcement. It was a huge, huge thing. Yeah. But the Fox Marvel movies don't just mean Deadpool. They also mean X-Men Apocalypse, Apocalypse like Gambit. Uh, Wait, they're not really going to make it. Fantastic Gambit, Four? They're making it. It's coming out in October next year. It's it's Channing Tatum. Tatum. I, I don't, I'm excited. <laughs> I don't is either. it Channing Tatum? But yeah. I kept thinking, they're not going to make a Deadpool movie. No, they are. So they are. that Gambit movie, it's going to happen. I really, really want Deadpool to be good. Just yeah, because okay. I feel really bad uh, for Ryan Reynolds. I'm excited for it. Why do you do why, why? No, because I, me. I remember, we, you guys ever <laughs> Wes is like, like, I hate that really good looking guy who's so successful. good. Like, he steals all the women mm, I was talking about. I totally feel so bad for him. With. Totally. No, I feel, no, I feel so bad, bad for him because he was he was like, oh, Green Lantern, it's going to be. It's going to be my vehicle. It's going to be my vehicle. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't at no. all. So it, I don't it's want because this to be Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Well, he was also Wally West, too, but that didn't happen either. So oh, I'm, you I'm mean Cal for and he's Cal okay. Never mind. And he's Cal And he's more Cal actually. Yeah. Well, guys, that's that finishes up the news. That's it. It's just the news. That's what we do. That's it.
You can't move after me. Just throw it. All throw the news. Throw in anger. Throw in anger. Oh, oh man. Nice. Thanks. I, I'm very happy in life right now, so I'm just going <laughs> to gift it to you. <laughs> See, that was creepy, though. Yeah. Yeah. Gift it to you. All right. All right, guys. Well, the what? next segment is... It's the Danger Room! Oh. It's Marvel vs. DC, and you at home get to decide who wins. Yes. But make sure you're tuning in from TwinGalaxiesLive.com for your votes to count. Marvel won it last Ooh. week, and Marvel is still five behind with a penalty. I have, I have a memo. <laughs> oh, okay, coming in. Coming in, coming in. Jen has a memo. She's not mic so we're going to have to relay this we're to you. We're doing the old voting system. Oh. What? It's being worked on. Old oh. school. Oh, okay. So Retro. you can be at TwinGalaxiesLive.com or you can be at Twitch. The Today, new the rules have been bent. On, so you guys have yeah. to use the old So system. Marvel gets to go first. We had a penalty from last week, so we only have 45 seconds to go for the first round, and I have something for you. I can put this down. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was all you needed. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's get something real quick. Yeah. Right, what's happening? My milkshake. No, it doesn't. Um, I'll tell you when to start. We have 45 seconds. Oh, God, 45 seconds. Okay. You're going to start in about 10 seconds. All right. Guys, so amazing Spider Man, renew your vows, number one. This is an awesome issue. Definitely pick it up. Uh, we get reintroduced to a Spider Man that we're familiar with. He works at the Daily Bugle. He's married to uh, Mary Jane. He has a kid and everything. Well, something's going down. The Avengers invite Spider Man to their mansion saying, Hey, we haven't, we've lost contact with the X Men. We don't know what's happening. And so they're inviting Spider Man and his family, who they don't know who he is, who the, his family is, saying, Hey, we need to protect you and stuff like that. Uh, while uh, Spider-Man is talking to MJ on the phone about it. He, uh, MJ is interrupted by a certain, oh my God, person, oh my God. And then uh, then the Avengers go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with uh, Regent, who has all the powers of the X-Men, so I guess we know what happens to the X-Men. And uh, so Spider-Man is has the decision to save his family, or? or, or what? Uh, what, what happens? What happens, oh man. I'm unclear. He no, meant, no to, okay. he meant to say just fucking buy that shit. People were talking. I would have gotten also, through it. How do you write so small? It's amazing. You have the oh, this? Yeah. He writes incredible. on like like rice beads. It's he like, writes on like little grains of rice. It's like you're a hamster. Lots, Did lots you of chew training. on this? That, no, I was curious I, about that. Yeah, why'd you do that? That was because some so of it was just like I need just small notes. That's not fair. So. Oh. Incredible. <laughs> so he writes these notes, but he preserves parts of the. Yeah, I don't waste paper, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he like He's preserves great. them. I don't waste paper. Do you want to go or do you want me to? Go ahead, I'll say one. He was born in like a depression right. era. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, that's good. You're an inspiration to millions, Luke. That's, <sighs> that's true. This, I love this book. It is very good. Fucking buy it. All right, guys, for round one, DC is presenting Midnighter number one. I'm going to put his face there because he's staring at you. This book is actually really, really awesome, and it's one of the most progressive books that I've seen in a while. I don't know if you guys knew this. Midnighter is a homosexual. He's gay. He's incredibly badass, and this book does a great job of showing that. He, uh, he hits up his, uh, his potential boyfriend, and his first night out with him is a date where he ends up getting in a fight with all these guys, and he does an amazing job of killing them. Brutally, which is actually really funny. He actually says, uh, let me see if I can find the line. Ah, uh, oh, come on. I'm not going to get to it in time. Oh, here we go. He says, uh, I'll burst your eyeball eyeballs and punch my fist into your liver. You'll be dying for hours. You hurt people in front of me. Pay the check. Oops, I told you I'm fast. Ready? Here we go. Uh, it's really well done. The layouts are incredible. On top of that, uh, on his second date, he actually manages to transport him back to his place where he uh, transplants a little one-way device to say, hey, if you ever need help, you can reach me. So it's cool that he shows loyalty. It gets kind of graphic, which is pretty awesome. I mean, DC is doing a good job of showing like, yeah, okay, we're, we screwed up before, but we're making up for it now with all of our, our uh, good feelings and good times. Um, on top of that, uh, the whole story arc is set up for the Midnighter series because the garden has been overtaken and Arch Nemesis has stolen his original original uh, name and information which Midnighter thought was gone forever so we're gonna get to follow his journey in finding out who he is for the rest of the series Midnighter number one definitely worth checking out Dude. Wow, you nailed that w Wiggles says it perfectly a gay badass finally <laughs> oh, love my gay badasses all right guys <laughs> so because we have uh, special guests we want to actually get your guys' opinions on what you think you've heard Marvel's argument well, you've heard DC's well, we argument um, oh yeah. we're gonna oh I thought you wanted to hear it first yeah. okay so Polls are going to be open here in just a second. Guys, the way to do it is exclamation mark vote space 
Marvel if you want to vote for Marvel or exclamation mark vote space DC if you want to vote for DC. You guys have 60 seconds on the clock to get your votes in and we're starting voting now. But guys, you guys heard about the arguments. What do you think? Marvel, DC, Midnighter, Spider-Man? Where, where are you guys going with this round? Have you heard of Midnighter before? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah. Uh, well, I, I guess... No, no, you go, you go. You no, go. You I, go. I still get, you I still get, nice I get, I get, I can't give any more information, so it's up to you guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, um, I, th I think I'm stuck on Midnighter. I was, <gasps> I was, uh, I was captivated by, by what both of y'all were talking about. Um, but I, I, I appreciate the, the, the grittiness and the graphicness of, of Midnighter and where they're, where DC is, is going towards and bringing some more intensity, which yeah, I think, Jonathan. I, I think change and growth is important. Uh huh. Hey, David. Yeah, David, back them up. Jonathan hates change. I mean, I, I, I can't argue with Banks. Um, I do like how epic the plot was getting with Marvel, though. They always seem to be in it for effects. Uh, but DC seems to be more modern. We do. Um, so yep. I'm kind of torn. Yep. Yeah. And voting is closed for round one. Sure is. Sure is. What are the results? Uh, yep. Is that, do you see is that the, final? Or? I think that should be, I think that's final. Can we make it? Yes, it's showed up in the poll. So DC Boom. takes it with 58%. Marvel 42%. DC takes I'll round one. I'll take a piece of that. Right. Hey, dude, Nicely done, sir. Yeah, yeah, I like it. We're outnumbered, Lucas. Yeah, you are. We're on numbers. No, DC, uh, this guy. Yes, two, two quick things, guys. Right, the first one is, because we're running a little no, bit slow. No, because you made us think about it. No, it was just round one. <laughs> All you had to do was say Spider-Man <laughs> Jennifer was tried. To, Jennifer tried to cut our time down to uh, 60 seconds per argument, but I said you got 45 seconds for the first round, so for the next round we could cut it down. But now Jennifer's saying I make us think about it, which I am now, because she didn't understand <laughs> well, what I was well, saying. What do we want to do? But we're going to cut them down to Yeah, that's what I was saying. Let's do a, let's do a minute. Okay. So. <laughs> So we're cutting it down to 60 second rounds. DC presents first. You want to go, Wes? Sure. Let's, let's look what at our got? comics and strategize. Oh, let me do things real quick. <laughs> okay. This is the shit. This is the shit. Just, look at that. That is the shit. And Give me a minute. Like this. Okay. Mm, this is soft. So DC is presenting Justice League number 41. This is the uh, the first uh, part of the Dark Side War. This is this is my favorite favorite supervillain. He is amazing this one. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of Jack Kirby, uh, New God stuff, Mr. Miracle. He's looking like a badass. There's so much to get through, I don't even know where to start. 60 seconds. Uh, great, vo uh, great voiceover from Wonder Woman about how uh, he started. Um, oh god, I can't go into that. Oh, there's so much good stuff. That was the lineup from the original Justice League animated series. Yeah, no, no, I know. Oh, damn, hold on. Let me go. This is, why'd you have to mess me up? I'm so... Okay, anyway, so uh, here's that weird thing about it's cutting into the adver uh, the advertisements uh, in the middle of the page, but it doesn't matter because Darkseid totally steals the show. This whole comic is setting up to this epic, epic war, and this, this gray chick kicks the crap out of the Justice League, and that's the, the, the destroyer comes, and she has a hawk, and she... Oh, that's a second. Oh, I'm done. But it's so good, you guys. It's so... Look at it. It makes you happy. Just makes you a happy person. I'm gonna go sit out. Treat I am your a comics happy better, person. Wes. Hashtag Treat your that. animal better. Yeah, I said it. I'm not an animal. <laughs> I'm his friend. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion. All right. Ready? No, no. Ready? Uh, we're almost ready. Ready? All right, guys. Hey, we're going to talk about the big event in the Marvel Universe, and it actually matters, unlike Convergence. This is Secret Wars, and uh, this is Jonathan Hickman and Isad Ribic's enormous redo of the Marvel Universe, but it's not wiping away history. It's actually just resetting it. What happened is Doom and Doctor Strange actually managed to uh, save the Marvel Universes by creating a brand new reality, and some people are starting to remember that things used to be the way they were uh, and that something is off and Stephen Strange and Dr. Doom remember that there's some amazing discussion in here I think uh, Robert Kirkman should be doing Dr. Doom forever. He should always write his lines The best dialogue is between him and Sue Storm though, and you realize that uh, Johnny Storm is actually lighting the sun. The cool thing is though there is a rescue uh, That there is actually su survivors from both universes one of them is Miles Morales who shows up and he's like, oh my god, I remember everything. So they're not resetting the Marvel Universe. This is still canon and it's an amazing crossover. You guys should be reading Secret Wars immediately. <laughs> it's a great way to sell it.
That finishes out round two here in the Danger Room. Uh, DC presented Justice League number 41, part one of the Dark Side, Dark Side War, Wars. and Marvel presented Secret Wars number three. Because yeah, our number crossovers three. matter. Do they? <laughs> All right. Uh, that means 60 it. seconds on the clock, guys. Exclamation mark, vote space Marvel for Secret Wars. Exclamation mark, vote space DC for the Dark Side Wars. Voting is now open. You guys have 60 seconds on the clock to cast your votes. Vote Marvel. Should we and ask what did for you opinions, think? or do we need to talk sponsor? Um, I don't know. Uh, I want, let's hear what Banks. What do you think, Banks? Well, while he thinks about his opinion, very quickly, guys, be sure to check out House of Secrets. They're our sponsor for the show. They're great. They're located here in Burbank. They've got all of the issues that we're presenting tonight available for purchase online digitally. If you guys are ever in Burbank, please be sure to check by. Uh, stop by because they've got incredible employees and awesome people who would love to help you out with anything you might have. Okay, so. Like He's made up his mind. Yeah, 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 monster, fix your vote. No space in between exclamation mark and Banks, vote. give your opinion. Okay, so there's there's some really awesome things that both of you just showed me in both yeah, of these things. Who won? Um, Who won for you? Oh, it's so tough when you put it like that. It's not really that tough. I think, uh, I, well, I, I want to read them both. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanos versus the Legion of Thor. Oh, oh hey, who sweet. ripped off who was Thanos first or Darkseid? I can't remember. That's oh, no, not it was Darkseid. It was Darkseid. That's it, guys. Voting is now closed. Like, I can't help that. Was, I can't uh, help I am still interested in hearing your opinion, though. Which, which book would you be inclined to pick up of the two? Uh, I, I have to say, I'd, I'd immediately pick up Justice League. Oh! Um, is that but, Justice League 41? Guys, but, that, that is a pretty good book. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's honestly, not, it's I, honestly I, not better than Secret Wars, but it's a really good book. It is a really good book. Right, well, it helps me get over conversions. At okay. this point, we see that DC has 54%, Marvel has 46%, DC good takes job, round two. But I also want to hear, I mean, David, I mean. sorry, it's it gets hectic in the middle of the danger room. Which book would you pick up? Would you pick up Secret Wars or would you pick up Dark Side War? Keep in mind. I like Secret Wars. I like the plot depth. I always liked, uh, you know, double plots, how the people are starting to remember, so that's really interesting this, to me. This book is sick! But We're, you know what? These books are also only $3, so yeah. buy them both. <laughs> Don't be cheapskates, comic book fans! My book is healthy. Let's see, this one is three ninety nine. dollars You wanna now go or you want me to? Uh, what do you got? Remember when oh, DC no, no, said do, do they that. would draw the yeah? line? Yeah, totally. Totally, and totally, didn't. totally. <laughs> and then I'll follow up with some little friends. Sure. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, guys, we're moving into round three. If DC wins this round, DC has won the week. If Marvel wins this round, they stay a, a, alive for another round. Uh, oh, you're getting better cocky with this book. You're getting straight up cocky, man. <laughs> you're getting straight up cocky. This is rude. I think you don't know, rude. Jonathan. This is a deep book. Okay? I'm almost inclined to just let them talk for the yeah. 60 seconds. But for round three, DC presents Batmite number one. Yeah, we Marvel, do. remember how you love to present all the cute little books that everybody loves? DC does the same thing now with Batmite. Uh, Batmite is uh, chained up and he gets kicked out of his dimension for being basically too much of a punk ass, which is <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, he immediately crashes Batman's Batmobile. Oops. Uh, and that's the real one, which is probably not so good. Nick Lachey makes a cameo in the middle of it. Uh, the funny ah. thing about the split art, though, it really doesn't matter. It's like if they had just drawn one page and just chunked it. I don't know. I guess maybe it could interrupt storytelling for some people. But it doesn't. it's not that big of a problem. Uh, they rescue a chick, and then Batmite gets captured by this sexy nurse who's kind of cartoony. Um, Jennifer got a text message, but that doesn't mean that my round's <laughs> over. So... Uh, Batmite gets kidnapped by Dr. Trauma, who's this crazy witch who wants to cut out Batmite's brain and uh, put another body in, or put another brain into him. Um, of course, they've actually managed to capture Hawkman, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the book is really fun and a great read, and at $2.99, it's absolutely worth picking up. Be sure to check out Batmite number one. DC tells you to. Batmite. <laughs> I like the last. I thought that, that added. It's Batmite. Yeah, I was doing Batmite. Bat Bat That's why I was like, yeah, this is good. So good. I love Batmite. <laughs> He's in chains. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep. And <laughs> go. Guys, uh, so we're going to present a new little cute book for you, a little AVX Marvel. Uh, so it opens up with a theme song. This comic book has a theme song, and I'm going to sing it to you. Welcome to Battle World, super fun for boys and girls. You might be ruled by apocalypse or laugh all day from at spider quips. It's quirky, it's silly, a bit insane. The Doc Ock might try to eat your brain, and it goes on from there. So what happens here, you know, all the X-Men interventions, Stuff like that. Uh, it opens up with magic and Iron Man. Uh, they're not sharing their toys, and magic is like, Give me my, or 
Iron Man's like, I'm not going to ruin your doll or anything. And Magic is like, it's an action figure and stuff like that. It's really cute and funny. Uh, the next day, Toad and uh, uh, Blob are trying to find something to eat. So they stop at Iceman's uh, ice cream uh, shop. Uh, but then, oh, wait, now they're in the mood for hot dogs. And then they're, oh, they're in the mood for burgers and stuff. And, uh, and Gambit's, oh, and towards the end of it, uh, they're like, oh, they got some new neighbors in town. And it's a bunch of twins. And, uh, you know, you can, s you know, it's Scarlet. Fucking fucking fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Who decided the fucking minute and a half? That's fucking, fucking shit. You're adding eight. We need you out of three. <laughs> I'm going to read both these books. <laughs> well, guys, uh, round three is a cuteness battle royale. We have uh, really a little uh, AVX for Marvel. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, and we have Batmite for DC. Voting yeah. remains the same. Exclamation mark, vote DC if you want to vote DC. <laughs> Exclamation mark, vote Marvel if you want to vote Marvel. Remember that there is a space in between them because I know you were telling yeah. somebody to yeah. fix the vote. Uh, <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock for round three. Go. David, we want to hear from you first this time. Uh, what do you think? Little Avengers versus X-Men or uh, Batmite? Um, I'm sorry. I was digging up one of the musical one, huh? And <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and Banks. And, and I'm going with Batmite for Sexy Nurse, man. <laughs> there we go. Sexy Nurse. That's right. That's why Banks is our guy. Clean, so guys, clean sweep here. Fast and Furious, seven <laughs> or eight. That's but only your final vote is actually going to count. So yeah. whatever you vote last is what's going to uh, to be voted. It looks like we've got some invalid votes invalid going on. Votes. So guys, remember that it's exclamation mark vote space DC or exclamation mark vote space Marvel to Let's get your votes it. in. Otherwise, you could exclamation mark vote hot nurse if you want to. Or but remember that your last vote is the only one that counts. You can vote Wiggles. 30. Done. Time is up 30. on Boom. round three. Oh, I count. My phone died at 30 seconds, so I counted. <laughs> Oh, okay. Jen counted the her head. The results are coming in slowly. Bam, clean sweep. Poll results, DC 54%, Marvel 38%, what? invalid vote 8%. So Great Wiggles, job. you were on the board, Wiggles man. You got 8% of the in, votes. In, in Wiggles. The independent party. <laughs> but sorry, Wiggles, you, you didn't win it. Uh, it looks like DC has won the week in three in three rounds. Which so means we can move on to a segment I like. Yes, yes yeah, we, we can. Yeah, we can. Add the tally to the board, sir, and we'll move on. Not to say I sabotaged us, off. because I'm I still there. think Secret Wars is the most exciting title on the scales right now. Oh, I love Secret Wars. Secret Wars is awesome. So that segment was 10 minutes. Boom, baby. And Jonathan yeah, that was, Hickman that was a really quick segment, wasn't should it? continue yes. to write so there Dr. Should have been I read four uh, Fuck it, Nick. Okay, time, should come down here and even try that in person. Dr. Well, guys. It would never happen. That moves us on to the next segment of the night. Do you yes. Want, yes. You want Jonathan to do it? Because you did the... Did oh, the yeah, planet, sure. So. I don't know what it is. Oh, do yeah, the I thing. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. The next segment is called... The Infinity Gauntlet. Boom! We, you guys suggest the best matchups, and uh, we'd tell you who'd win. So, yeah. like, if, for instance, you were like, who'd win? Iceman versus Firestorm. I'm just going thematic based on the music video. But uh, we'll tell you who wins. So go ahead and uh, suggest the best mano a mano matchups in the uh, chat, and we'll tell you guys whether or not you're full of it or not. And guys, not to not to put our guests on the spot either, but uh, David or Banks, if you guys have a burning superhero question of uh, a battle that you wanted to see and, and see who you think might win, uh, we're happy to put our nerd knowledge to use because yeah. we don't do anything else with we it. Don't. We we have no <laughs> life. But it doesn't also it doesn't have to just be comic book characters, it be TV, like any fictitious characters you want to put up against each other. Or like the, Abraham Lincoln. Yes. The suggestions are starting to come in. Telebro wants to do 1970s Incredible Hulk versus 1990s Incredible Hulk. Okay. Uh, Bucket Naked wants Batmite versus Mixius Pitlick. Oh, that's a good And one. VDA Monster wants Constantine versus Doctor Strange. Well, one has a TV show that isn't anything <laughs> anymore, and one has a movie that's coming out. So Constantine that. versus Doctor Strange. Hmm. Would All you right. be into that? Well, we're, sure. we're going to go with uh, Constantine versus Doctor Strange for the first one. You guys want to you wanna give him a little bit about Constantine? Uh, you know the show better, so do your thing. Uh, Constantine is a master or dabbler of the dark arts. Uh, he's one of the most powerful mystics in the DC universe, um, but he's a little rusty in current continuity. Actually, in current continuity, he's amazing. In, yeah. the, in the series, in the television show, he was rusty. Um, Chain smoker, but not in the TV show has died and because he tried to commit suicide he uh he was or 
you can, depending on which story you're going with. Yeah, uh, his soul was damned to hell, but he's worked towards retribution. Sometimes it's succeeded, sometimes it's failed. Um, he killed another version of himself in a recent comic book, once again, damning himself to, to hell. It was a great book. Um, that was part of the Constantine run that was going on where he was trying to save the inhabitants of Earth, too. Um, and he's a dabbler. He's, he's got a lot of swagger, I but guess. Doctor Strange is a sorcerer supreme. He is the most powerful sorcerer in the uh, Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. And recently he did make a deal with an old god to uh, save his world. So he's OP as fuck right now. Okay. Um, so okay. I'm going to go with mm -hmm. Doctor Strange based solely on power. That does not mean that Constantine won't be able to trick him some way or seduce him into bed. Constantine <laughs> does go that way sometimes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just, go, for it. just going based on it, we're gonna, I'm going to go with Doctor Strange on this one. How about you, uh, Lucas? Doctor Strange. Yeah. Period. End of story. Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to go with Doctor Strange as well. David? Uh, same, actually. I do think there's potential for Constantine to be seen enough. Hmm. Hmm. Wes? I'm also going to go with the physician who is abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange takes it. Hands down. That being said, we really wanted that Constantine show to come back. And yeah. Stuff. It was, it was Damn good. it. He was great. I hope he like shows uh, up in the movies. Uh, like that actor can Or shows can up in, in, in uh, Supergirl, which is going to cost yep. over with The Flash. You need to let up. You need to just watch that pilot. I will wouldn't, watch five. Wouldn't, you know what would be awesome? Like, random segue here, but it would be awesome if they took Constantine and they made him the bridge between worlds. He could show up in Gotham. He could show up in, yeah, in like the Arrow. Flash. He could show up in Flash. Um, and just have him... Traverse. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it now that I have no yeah. inside knowledge, but we already have the bridge between worlds yeah. in the DC TV continuity. But he'd be a better and one. And you know it. <laughs> um, all right. What else we got here? We got Spider-Man versus Spider-Woman. We got Blade Sex. versus Andrew Bennett. We've got Jace Hall versus VDA Monster. Uh, uh, what about David? Do you have any suggestions? Stan Lee versus David Goyer. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Lee wins. David, David, he just, he I'm, just David I'm sorry. Sorry, bro. Stan Lee versus George Lucas. <laughs> Who? Stan, Stan Lee versus, versus George, George Lucas. Lucas. Stan, Stan Lee also wins. <laughs> Stan Lee doesn't even need to fight. Yeah, it's just because Stan Lee didn't make prequels. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Let's calm down. <laughs> oh, he said it. Uh, I agree. <laughs> what do you think, Banks? Any suggestions? Anything I, you I want to see? Uh, the White Walkers army versus Blade and Whistler. Mm. 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 He makes the weapons right? I use. Interesting. I make the weapons he uses. <laughs> there you go. It's like, why does he Blade does. sound like Chris Christopherson? <laughs> I just want, I just, I just, I just want to see Blade like, like kill a White Walker. And be like, some of you motherfuckers just love ice skating uphill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wesley Snipes. Well, I, I don't know much about the White Walkers, so uh, oh, you have to man. give us some, some background. If you, saw, if you saw Game of Thrones two, two episodes ago. Uh, Blade would have a pretty tough time as one person not getting oversworn by a ton of the undead. I'm gonna have to go with White Walkers on that one. Are they yeah. vampires? They're uh, the undead, and they swarm so over the hill. Yeah, they're zombies. Okay. Yeah. They're zombies on horses. So I'm on, on some horses. of them are on horses, yeah, and some That's of them are, are even conscious. It seems. But there was literally a scene where, like, the leader of the White Walkers lemmings them off a cliff towards the town. And they all just fall, and it's like, did they just kill themselves? And then they all start just standing up again, and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Nothing was stopping them, except salt water. Uh, so I yeah, have, yeah. I have yeah. a question. Not strong swimmers. <laughs> but they can't skate uphill. I'm gonna check your microphone. Oh, my, my, uh, I, uh, yeah. How am I doing? I think it's good. I think they it's are crazy undead on steroids. Um, yeah, that Game of Thrones right. episode was like the best episode of Walking Dead yet. <laughs> and I love, I like The Walking Dead, but that was amazing. Uh, let's hear it for Game of Thrones. That's yep. pretty awesome. So, so there you go. Game that? of okay. Thrones wins. Wait, uh, quick question though. When when they kept saying like <coughs> winter is coming, were they talking Ooh. about the the white? Is that what's up? Because they're, they're like, actually white talking about actual like, winter. Like, like, they're talking about like, the actual weather. Winter is but, like an oh. eight hundred year. Thing. It took forever. I wanted a metaphor. Cluster. Weather was coming for a long Hooray time. For and metaphor. and when when the White Walkers come, it's in a, they come in like a white fog. Yeah, uh, like, sense of adventure. Jennifer says hi. Oh, guys, we got Modoc versus Optimus Prime, Attack on Titans versus the Avengers, which is a comic. That was a free comic book day title. Oh, was it really? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the back of uh, the Secret War title. So well, let's uh, we let's go with that. let's go with Revan's suggestion. How about because we have? I don't think Revan's ever suggested anything before. Modoc it has been a long Prime. time. So. 
Unless you want to do Bucket Naked's Battle Royale between all the Robins and Batgirls. Who would win in a, cor in a Battle Royale between the current Robins and Batgirls? You have to throw them all off of the top rope. Okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? Modoc versus Optimus Prime, that would just be goofy, right? Yeah. It would be pretty goofy. <laughs> I think David the WD yeah, yeah. answers it. Just yeah, Modoc just went, hand yeah. on face. Yeah. Yeah, let's do the back girls in the round. Not to say I don't want to see Modoc in a Captain America Marvel movie. I just want to see how they, they you know, because they got Arnim Zola in there. And yeah. I thought that was pretty smart, how they got Arnim so Zola in there. So you want to see how they would do I just want to see how they would do a giant floating head. Huh. Pretty funny. I thought it was going to be Peter Dinklage. I thought that would have been amazing. Dude, no, he has used such you. a big head. I love it. Go ahead, uh, go ahead and uh, propose some more. Doctor Doom versus Martian Manhunter. <laughs> there are a lot of Doctor Doom as God. Yeah, there are a lot of sconces and fireplaces in Castle Doom, so I think Martian Manhunter would be pretty scared off. Uh, but about Vision versus Martian Manhunter, the the, the big face fight. Uh, yeah, we did pretty, do that one. They're pretty similar. Yeah. On a lot of levels. But Except Vision is not afraid of fire. <laughs> And he doesn't have telepathy. That's true. But then again, he's not human. Neither's Martian Manhunter. He's a Martian. <laughs> no, no. no uh, Touche. Vision. vision, right? He's not human, so he wouldn't be able to manipulate vision. Galactus versus Unicron, the planet eating moon. What do you guys go there? They both consume planets. What do you got? Well, because I'm dyslexic, all I see is unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got nothing for it. Uh, there's two good ones. There's Galactus versus Unicron, and there's Etrigan versus Hellboy. Now, would Galactus be like, oh, Unicron, it's a, it's a, well, it's a planet eating moon. Does, does Galactus eat moons? He eats everything, doesn't he? He might be like, oh, there's a snack. <laughs> does the moon eat spaceship hat wearing? They both eat planets. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was wait, trying to come up would with Galactus versus joke, Unicron be, a, be like, <laughs> I think Galactus versus Unicron would be like a pie eating contest. Like, yeah. they, it's like, do not eat your planet until you're ready. All right, the timer, three, two, one. Who could eat a planet faster, Galactus or Unicron? It's got to go with Unicron, because Galactus has to set up all his shit. Because you know how Galactus is like, I have to set up my machine. Yeah. And my, and then the give me a moment. Yeah, I'll give me a moment. Soon. Let's give fan, let's give Mr. Fantastic 13 days to figure this out. Uh, I'm going to go with Unicron on that one. What do you guys think? He just starts eating. I, I feel like we did this one before when Lawrence was on the show, and I think Lawrence actually put it in favor of Galactus. Mm. It's okay, Lawrence can be wrong. Uh, Etrigan <laughs> versus Hellboy? I like Granny Goodness versus The Watcher. Granny goodness Mr. Fantastic Mr. versus Mr. Incredible. Vision would decimate Von Doom. Eh. Jamie Olsen versus Detective Chimp. That's amazing. <laughs> Daredevil versus Simon Dark. Chloe Smallville versus Felicity Arrow. Maybe in a crying contest. Daredevil versus Simon Dark. That's a good one. We also have Pikachu versus Electro. Oh. Um, oh. By. And there, there was <laughs> one more from Sense of Adventure that I want to say was uh, Elastigirl versus Miss Marvel. I think it was. Uh, okay. He wrote it better than I'm saying it. It was, it was Miss Marvel versus Miss. Elastigirl. No, what but was Elastigirl? Face so Poppies, that's what we're saying. Galactus uh, needs a machine to consume the Earth. Well, Galactus doesn't just start eating the Earth. He has this giant machine that takes him like forever to construct and gives Mr. Fantastic enough time to like. That's what it was. He was saying yeah. Elastigirl versus Mr. Fantastic. Oh. Sorry. Dare I was just thinking about women. So not Daredevil <laughs> versus The Punisher. You just have to wait like uh, a year. Yeah, Daredevil versus The Punisher has been done quite a bit. And in it's going to happen on books. Netflix in just a bit. And uh, I love the Daredevil. I love the fact that they introduced Punisher in the Daredevil series because that is like the best. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I love that those, those guys have two different methodologies and they just go up head to head. There's a really good David Latham. If you guys know Dave Latham, he does Stray Bullets. He did a great run. He did like a mini series, Daredevil vs. Punisher. If you guys can find it, it's awesome. He drew and wrote it. Oh, I, I got it. Yeah, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man vs. Andrew, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. I have the answer. They both don't win. Uh, no, they it's the box office. We're going to go with Tobey. Thanks. <laughs> bye. <laughs> one made Spider-Man 2. The other one made Amazing Spider-Man 2. We're going to go yeah. with Tobey. Mm. True. There we go. All right, I think we well, guys, we got we got time for one more suggestion, so let's get some good suggestions. We'll do one more Infinity Gauntlet, and then we're going to move on. So get your suggestions in now. For the stretchy battle, I think Stretch Armstrong wins. Yes. Oh, yeah. He has to. Yeah. But he's, yeah. like, this big. Doesn't matter. And you're like, can or Mrs. Incredible. What about Miss Incredible? <laughs> Jennifer? 
Jennifer about, versus back with Cassandra versus, Kane. Yeah, what about you versus Cassandra Kane? She'll kill, she'll kill you. I'm going to go with Jennifer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Jennifer. She knows Jude, like Judo. It's crazy. What's Judo? Judo, I don't know, what is it? Judo? I know it. Judo. She knows Judo. That's it, Judo. No, because Jennifer would be like, take off that bat suit, and Cassandra Kane would be like, ah, and run away to. Never mind. Kind of That's not true. Like in that one comic, Cassandra was like, I don't want to be back around anymore. And she just got naked on the roof and walked oh. off. You don't remember that? That had to one. No, that was before the show even existed. Oh. <laughs> ah, no, okay. this is the best one. My dad versus your dad. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would win. No, he's not. My dad him. is the strongest there is. No, he's not. Poor Lucas. He's like, well, he hit me pretty That's hard. So yeah. Okay. That's no awful. <laughs> that is Looking awful. Out into the shed. Giant Man versus Bane. Skeletor versus Megatron. We've done Iron Man versus Batman. Have we ever done Bane versus the Juggernaut? Do we want to do that one? That's a pretty good one. We'll do that one. Let's do it. The Juggernaut. The juggernaut. He has mystical powers. He's uh, an unstoppable. He's got an enormous amount yep. of strength. Uh, you can't stop him if he starts running. You can't running. stop the Juggernaut. Uh, uh, juggernaut, hands down. And Bane has to rely on his venom. Yes, Bane yeah, has been on most time. He is not from London or wherever Tom Hardy was from. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. We're going to go with the <laughs> South American Bane. I was from, a Shakespearean actor. What are you talking about? He's from a fictitious uh, <laughs> South American Bane's country. also in, in, incredibly intelligent. He's very intelligent. And Juggernaut's not. He's got messed up teeth. Mm. And he's a uh, giant. Uh, the teeth part. That's and the, I mean, to, to be fair, if we're giving this uh, an honest run for its money, uh, Bane has gotten off Venom. Um, he's he's still super strong without it. Yes. Right. It's just when he's he being, strategically realizes he that he's the juggernaut. Nope. When yeah. he's when he's not in a good position, he'll shoot up for that added boost. So uh, it's vascular. Can can Bane like Sometimes. punch through a concrete wall? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because Juggernaut just runs through it like it's paper. Yeah. Yeah. It, actually, in uh, the latest issue of Arkham Knight, he picks up a chunk of cement, and you think he's gonna and throw he it at Batman, like and then he just squishes it just for the fun of it. Just okay. Like yeah, he's like, this is how strong I am. But he doesn't need it like a donut? No. So I can still use that in a comic if I like DC yeah. It's all you. Yeah, you can yep. totally do that. Okay, Wait, I'm going to pitch that. Jeff Johns just stole it. Wiggles, just so you know, he, Juggernaut is not a mutant. Okay. Okay, so David uh, says David says that the Hulk can't stop the Juggernaut. I don't know. I mean, nothing can stop the Juggernaut. It's kind of the rule, but is that really well, a rule, or is that just what he yells? Well, Blob says he's unmovable. All Blob the time. is unmovable, and the, he we gets had, moved. All yeah, the time. we've had the Juggernaut <laughs> and the Blob run into each other. But so here's a little update on Juggernaut. He like Kane Marco. He lost the powers. The Sidorak gem went yeah, to Colossus. Colossus. Yeah. But now it's back with Juggernaut. But now it's like ten times what it was before. So, oh, Bane's fucked. Yeah, so, like, the, in a previous uh, issue of Amazing X-Men, you know, uh, the X-Men were like, oh, yeah, let's just take off his helmet, or we'll take care of, you know, the Juggernaut. They did that, but now he's all, like, different. You can't, you can't yeah. get him telepathically at all, even though Bane doesn't have any telepathic powers, but still. Yeah. So, but Hulk has stopped the Juggernaut, I think, yeah. Well, I was going to ask David what his opinion was, but it looks like David dipped out. So, David, See if you, you are David. still in chat, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate it, and the music like video is amazing. We wish you the best of success. We look forward. forward to you on July 1st um, if we're really invited. Well, what do you think, Banks? Party. About which part? About Juggernaut <laughs> versus Bane. Who would you go with? <laughs> fight? Um, I mean, I, I'm... <sighs> It's, t it's, 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 it's tough with Juggernaut. To do it. it's, it's tough with Juggernaut. Keep in mind, Juggernaut was not born in the I'm from South America. I'm from South America. I'm from Brazil. Don't you know who I am? Oh, oh, I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. Whoa, I forgot all about that movie. That's Why Banks, that everyone. Me? What do you think, Banks? I say, I, well, I, I, I mean, I like Tom Hardy. Does that count? Uh, no, I think, yeah. the, I think the Juggernaut, man. You can't stop the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut is brutal. Yeah. Wes? Um, Mad Max was better. Did you guys ever play Mad the Max Marvel superheroes role playing game? The what? The There's Marvel a Marvel superheroes role playing, role playing game. game. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, I have the. I have it. The Marvel superheroes. It, like whenever you'd want to fuck with your friends because they would create their own heroes or they would play as like, I'm gonna be Spider Man. I'm gonna be this. You'd just be like, okay, you turn a street corner and the Juggernaut standing there, and they'd be like, are you fucking kidding me, Jonathan? Like, stop throwing these characters at us. Aww. It's the Juggernaut. Like, let's make it a little more realistic. Make it Stilt Man or something. <laughs> like, like I'm playing as Daredevil. Don't make me fight the Juggernaut, unless you want the game to end. Yeah. Penelope well, I think I think uh, I think it's universal. I think that? Juggernaut's Penelope the winner this time. Oh. Juggernaut. I should do more voice acting. You should, man. Yeah. I think she's right. Good idea. I know some people. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of the Infinity Gauntlet, which yes. brings in our last segment. It's the Watchtower. It's where we hang out and chat with you about whatever it is that we want to <laughs> chat about. Anything. <laughs> we want to talk out. about his personal life, I'm sure. But it's we're totally we're actually going to do a quick swap. Jennifer's going to hop in. Oh, Jennifer's hand just going to use the hand mic because she's down. got an announcement. Jennifer's today. back. Dude, party's over. I'll sit. I'll sit. Dude, party's over. I'll just sit where you're sitting. Yeah, that's, why, that's why I said come on down. Swap. Matt, okay. Matt get her. Oh, man. Matt, come sit with you. I was giving you a fair Matt. warning before oh. I sat on you. Do you want in the corner? No, Matthew? <laughs> really quickly, guys. Uh, our Dude, dear party. friend, Greg Barbie. <laughs> Dear friend of the comic book show was kind enough to purchase two multi passes to Kamikaze, Stan Lee's Kamikaze, wow. um, and the multi pass pre sale is going on right now. Why this is significant is that the pre sale entitles you to a uh, ticket to an autograph line. So you know you got to get in line to get the autographs from the big the the yeah. big yeah. big draws. Yeah. Like us. Um, show yep, we'll like us. What? If you can talk to us. We got stuff to do. But. And speaking I, of the podcast, like trying to sneak speaking into Kamikaze. Of, uh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> speaking, yes. of, speaking of the Punisher, uh, Tim Bradstreet <laughs> just signed on to be at Kamikaze, and he drew oh, all rad. those amazing covers for the Punisher nice. during the Garth Ennis run. So he's one of my favorite Punisher yes. artists. Yeah, I want. I want to plug Kamikaze too. It is a really good time. A really good yeah. time, and uh, the pre-sale I believe just started for the multi-pass. It just started Last a couple of days ago. Last week, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if the sale's still going on, but these are two coveted tickets. Yeah. Coveted. How do they work. get them? I'm coveting. Coveted. They're going to get them, them right now. on a future episode of the comic book show. Coveted. Oh, a future episode. Okay. So you have to tune in every week coveted. because. Coveted. In <laughs> Uh, Bucket Naked Kid just Still had a great suggestion. He said, why don't you guys use this time to suggest some non-DC Marvel things that you're into right now? Sure, no, but let me, let me, I'll finish plugging like this. What? So guys, oh, tune in Tune in every week. Uh, we won't make you wait like eight or ten weeks or something crazy like that. It'll be in the next few weeks, but we're going to be giving these away. They're like a million dollar value. Oh, I million dollars. I assigned it randomly. And with all the money. it's pretty close. Wait, yeah. uh, I need to remind you of something, Jennifer. Yes. Uh, you Facebook something... Last oh, week that was sing. resolved. It was okay. it was a lucky winner <laughs> who won <laughs> something from Pow. Okay. From Stan. What was it? it was it was a signed graphic novel oh. for a DMC comic. Oh. Or, what? Yeah, it was awesome. Guys, you need to follow us it on pays. social media. Dude. Facebook, Twitter, social Twitter, Twitter, media. Twitter, 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 I absolutely like taunting them the whole time. I think, I think <laughs> while we continue Penelope's the show, killing it, man. you should just slowly move the envelope in and out of frame. You feel like this is what you might have, maybe. But uh, really, to get back to Bucket Naked Kid, like what non DC Marvel stuff are you guys reading? I'm reading real books. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> books Get out of here! What are, you, what are you reading? What are you reading? This is the comic book. I'm, I'm working books. through. Uh, I've been working on the Inferno for a while. Uh -huh. It's slow, and there's a lot to interpret. So it's kind of like, okay, Dante. I've got, I've got the yes, Dante's Inferno. I've got the, the translated full <laughs> Latin and the the English, and it's That's it's cool. a cool read. Um, the other thing that I'm I'm actually working on is the Once and Future King. Oh, it's um, one of my favorite books. I never read it, so Holy for me, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm like, man, I really should have. But uh, and then uh, I also <laughs> I also have the Batman Rise of Sun Tzu uh, <laughs> graphic <laughs> or the, 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 art, the video game Batman. adaptation to comics because the, the the game was so atrocious. I couldn't. But the book it. might be good. Well, it's not very good so far. So uh, you said two but books like, that are absolutely worth reading, and then you mentioned that. Well, which you, might make you need the one, You need the one that's just like you just <laughs> zone out completely and like with while the, reading. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like I mean, when you when you sit down and you scary. read uh, the Inferno, you're like, oh wow, this is really really deep. And then you're reading Once a Future King, and you're like, okay, this is awesome. Like I'm excited. And then you read that, and you're like, oh, this is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you get it's different things. I'm also reading and rereading actually the um, writing for comics book you gave us way back when. Oh, um, oh yeah, going gave back to yeah, yeah, going back comics. to that. So. I've been writing some comics. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Nothing. I'll tell you. Uh, I got a comic for. I got a, a new artist for my Super Action Man comic, and nothing makes me write faster than getting artwork and realizing he's only like three pages behind me. Oh <laughs> shit! And that he can do a page in a day. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. holy that sets a fire shit! Under your booty. I can write three pages in a day, but there's a lot more work. 
Like, I, you know, like there's a lot going on. Yeah. And this dude is giving me pages. And I'm sitting here going, holy shit, like the train is coming and I'm laying down tracks like a cartoon <laughs> character. And I still have to read my comics. Like I'm reading, uh, I think I just read Autumn Lands today. I caught up on Autumn Lands, which is like Kurt Busiek's book for Image. There's a lot of image stuff that I like. I do read uh, IDW's TMNT book, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Uh, but um, 28 now? Yeah, but, but, but Image is killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Image is just doing such a good book. Uh, almost everything Image publishes is worth reading. But um, from Velvet to um, Black Science to any of the Reminder books, like the Jason Aaron stuff, uh, it's just, there's a ton to read. You can't really go wrong with, with image books. Um, that's what I'm reading. And then anything John Arcudi writes for uh, Dark Horse, I'll read that stuff. Uh, he wrote a book called Rumble, which is really awesome. It gets collected in August, but I'm excited. Like, there's, it's really hard to get me to not read a comic. You know, my wife uh, is always like, turn off the light, it's 1 a.m. And I'm like, I can't, I'm reading my comics. It's like, she goes, why don't you do this stuff when I'm not here? I was like, you wouldn't be married to a guy who reads comics when you're not at home? Like, <laughs> like during the day, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I read comics at night. And she's like, why don't you do this during the day when I'm at work? I'm like, because I'm working. You think I'm just some shithead who sits here during the day when you're gone and like, reads comics? You wouldn't be married to that asshole? That's what you want. No offense. <laughs> I've been, but you know what I'm I, saying, right? You know what I'm saying. I've been doing reading uh, something that's been really fun. Um, I've been reading Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow at the same time. Oh. And, and, and so it's, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's the story of being an Ender from their perspectives. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same story, but just looking at it completely different. It's really fun. I read them both oh. um, uh, several times as a kid, but reading them together and going back and forth, you get to see looks at the same scenes um, just from the completely different side. Mm. You know, it's as if you can read... Harry and Ron's you know, you didn't, look you at any of those books? No. I'm Ender's oh, Game's a great are, book. Those are super worth it. I haven't read the yeah. Ender. No. Ender's Shadow is the same story from Little Bean's perspective. And they and they didn't show Bean in the movie the way that Bean was in the books. You know, yeah. Bean is Bean is like stacked up against the biggest odds you can possibly imagine, and it's just a well, the name like Bean. Badass. Yeah, His Bean. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, that was was that a swing and a miss for you? The the, the Ender's Game. Movie. The movie, um, you know, everybody. I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess so, but I, I enjoyed just today. seeing a couple scenes. You know, seeing the battle room live right. was something you'd always imagine. I, I thought they didn't do. I, I, I thought Gavin Hood. You know, I know how much he cared about that and how much he put in. Um, but I mean, yeah, that book is just so thick to mm. to try and make it a commercial success when it's really like a, a well, hardcore a, character I piece. Think, I think with books like that big, you, you ha and especially that's a book that has a yeah. storyline. You know, it's, yeah. like to, it's not just two books in that storyline, but you have to do. A series four and like movies, yeah. Game yeah. of Thrones is really educating that, or you have to do four movies like with right. the Hunger Games. I was watching that Game of Thrones ending, uh, the ending of the finale, and the whole time I was like, dude, when you were 12 years old, you just wanted to make a Dragonlance movie. And now I was like, I just want to make a Dragonlance series. Did you ever read those D&D those &D books? Yeah. Wiggles, you're right. You know what I mean? Like Ravenloft and like Forgotten yeah. Realms. Dragonlance was mine. Like you'd, yeah. you'd go with your friends who played D&D &D and be like, are you Forgotten Realms or are you Dragonlance? <laughs> or are you, are you goth and you're into like Ravenloft, you know, all the vampires yeah. and stuff. I was like, I'm Dragonlance. And you kind of like, that's how you like identified yourself in the D&D &D world. Yeah. Did I just fucking out nerd everyone on this couch? No, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I actually hadn't thought about those yeah, in years, like, I don't know but I remember picking up like, those paper yeah. bags, man. <laughs> it's okay. That Jeff. was God, That was like, like early '90s. Yeah. Guys, I'm, I'm fucking yeah. 36 years old. Yeah, <laughs> I'm closer to the grave than I am to reading those books. I can't remember <laughs> what I had for breakfast, let alone 20 years ago. <laughs> Guys, um. Straight up, I know you gave a shout out to Patel, but she just got real serious in the chat. She said, it's always fun here tonight. I had a rough night. I found out one of my friends is uh, really, I'm guessing, ill. It was feeling down. I've been cheered up here uh, for comforting me. Thank you for comforting me through some roughness. Wishing peace and no pain for my friend. I hope it's okay I brought that up. It's totally okay of that you course. brought it up. There's nothing better than, than being sincere with us and being real. That's why we're here. Hell yeah. And uh, thanks for being part of us. That's awesome, awesome man. Awesome thoughts go to you and your friend. Yeah. Totally. If you weren't here, we would, well, we'd probably still be talking about comics just amongst ourselves. <laughs> you know what? You made true. it. True. Well and and I, think, I think, you know, people like Penelope coming in and, and participating in the show is what makes this so cool. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know what? I'm gonna, super rad you know, for, looking for joining acting in. acting just for you. Seriously, Penelope. yeah. That's going to be great. And uh, Twin Galaxy Live brings up one of the old commands of Moobot. If you type exclamation mark hugs, and it triggers Moobot. <laughs> hey, David's oh. speaking Moobot. my language, man. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> um, 
So, since it's Watch Tower and we can talk about whatever we want to talk about, uh, has anybody the watched NBA any totally. of the yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Justice League Gods and Monsters Machinima series? I have. No, I haven't got a chance. There are, there are two episodes yeah, out two right episodes now. Episodes. Uh, Superman with a goatee, right? Yep. That was the second one that Sorry. launched was Bombs, and the first one that, or Bomb, and the first one that launched was, uh, what was it called? Uh, I know it was just it was, Harley and Yeah, it was Batman. Harley and Batman, and I don't remember what it was called. No, Harley is brutal. Yeah, she's yeah. wearing lingerie and panties, and she's just, it's it. really dark. Yeah. Oh, Killing and people. Tara Strong is back what? as Harley. As Harley? Uh -huh. Not as Bubbles. Not as Bubbles. Aww. No, that but she's back as Harley. So. I'll watch it if the intro is that night. <laughs> but it's free, you guys can check it out on YouTube. Um, they YouTube baked in ads, which is a little bit unfortunate. Why so. do we use that as an argument? I had it locked and ready, and then Jennifer changed the time limits down to 60 seconds, so we would have Thanks, taken penalties Jennifer. on all of them. You should talk about how they recast the entire cast of the Powerpuff Girls. What? I didn't know this. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, I can't, hey, can't come hear you. Girl what news. are you saying? Girl news. Come on. What are you saying? Oh my gosh. Get that, get that hand mic. Yeah. Right here. I don't no, have the hand I'll mic. talk into your chest. Talk into your chest. Mm. Do it the whole time. So uh, this is big. This is big news for. I know there's a lot of crossover Get between closer. comic book fans and people that like voice acting in general. Get vampire. On his so name. the entire, the entire cast. They announced the new Powerpuff Girls series, and they've recast the entire mm. cast of voice actors, Why? including Tara Strong, with younger like Disney Channel girls. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. The internet is pissed off. Take that hey, childhood. What what would this what station would this show be airing on? Cartoon Network? E.G. Daily and all, like, they're, they're, they're all still really yeah, they're doing now. stuff. What the hell? Yep. And that don't they do, don't no they do, sense, don't they Disney. basically, don't they I, do uh, My Little Pony? Isn't that basically like Powerpuff? Didn't the Powerpuff talent go to My Little Pony and then done by the same I people? Know. I don't know. I don't know because I'm a straight male. <laughs> I, I just remember because I followed Tara red on blooded. Twitter. red-blooded. I bleed and the American flag pours out. <laughs> Got it. American. 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 Well, it's weird. I don't like that. The, it makes me sad. It makes I, me very sad. I hadn't heard anything about this. I have the so. whole series. I showed him. I did. He does have it. I saw I it. Okay. I that showed was, it. That was down. a half a sentence, you kind of. You also have some pornos. We saw your porno stash. Don't. That was the me. same thing. It was <laughs> that was his power buff. Let's right? calm down. But Gods and Monsters is actually, it, it's... I remember the trailers, and we didn't use the trailers very much for arguments, no, and it was kind of like, good. this is meh. But now... It's just so different that I'm kind of okay with it. I'm like, don't think of Batman, don't think yeah. of Superman. Just watch these as shorts. Like right. Harley is Harley. Harley is exactly Harley. God. But Batman is totally different. Yeah. Superman is like an old jaded version of Superman. And the just shorts are does one offs, care. or they are actually a series. I because the way you're talking about it, ones, it sounds like the each ones one that are coming out now on a different story. The ones that are coming out now are just one offs. They don't okay. seem to tie together. They like the Batman ones, just Batman and Harley. The Superman one is Superman, and I think that was supposed to be... Brainiac? But, yeah, I think that was supposed to be Brainiac, but I don't know. They're all free on YouTube. How long they're, are they? they're like they six minutes. I'll watch that. I so, got an attention span problem. They, yeah. said, they said like the government created Brainiac to To stop try and fight Superman. Superman. Interesting. Oh. But now hmm. they need Superman to stop Brainiac. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to run on that platform. A three minutes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We, Thanks. we have. Uh, if you had a chance, what superhero would you be? What's Choose your... one with a beard. <laughs> Choose one with a beard. You know he could shave. If he ah, to. <laughs> his beard is too good. Wow, I love that question. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, okay. Dr. Wait, that's a sign. Get him um, out of here. Um, out of here. Yeah, I want to play a villain. I want to play. Um, I want to play someone who gets to have a whole lot of fun. Like arcade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, like I mean, I guess you know. Like you know, I you know, I, I, so, some, someone so someone who's got a lot of a lot of um, a lot of science behind it, and someone who can who can uh, I don't know, Mr. Sinister, Nate, Dr. Nate, Doom. maybe. Oh yeah, he's got a goatee, Mr. Sinister. Hey, that face I, I like the Nightcrawler idea. Nightcrawler. Cool. I like I like that we asked no, you about not. being a superhero, and you're like, I want to be evil. Um, <laughs> I want I want to be uh, I want to manipulate science. I want to manipulate um, people. That's totally Mr. Sinister. There you go. You know, Ray yeah, Shaw Gould? Ray yeah. Shaw Gould? Be an old man that doesn't want to be old? To come, come back into play, that could be yeah. sweet. I mean, there's so many good ones. Um, Has a, you have a hot daughter? 
Uh, does Batman? I don't know how much of a draw that is. Jesus, what? <laughs> I looked over at Wes. I looked over at Wes is staring at him so intently, like, <laughs> say yes. Say, say yes. yes. I need this. I need this Read fantasy. Read my fan fiction. <laughs> I love it. Sense of Adventure says you'd make a good The Beast from X-Men. You would make good The Beast. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sense of Adventure, you rocking it? <laughs> I would totally do that. Um, that dude's pretty good, though. Um, he used to date Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. Uh, minor caveat, he was great in Skins, too. Do you have some issues with that? Uh, do you want to date Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, uh, yeah, totally. Jennifer, <laughs> you're a big-town fan. Yeah, and Dark Lore. Beast McCoy does actually, oh, for the X-Men Apocalypse universe, does actually mm -hmm. satisfy all of his needs. Yep. Wow, wow. actually, science, yeah, VDA Monster, there we go. VDA Monster gets it. Good D call, VDA. Dark, really? Dark Beast. That, there it is. Uh, the only other thing I really quickly wanted to bring up, while we still have time, Dan Jurgens is now writing Batman Beyond, and it's Tim Drake mm. as Batman Beyond. It's awesome. Yeah, There's yeah. Those, there's my little, my little one-off. Very interesting. With the uh, one minute and 20 seconds that? left, so. I don't even know about the DC continuity. So, like, all DC continuity is good to go from here on yep. out. All of it. Yep. So, whenever you go pick up a DC book, you don't know what the heck's going on. It doesn't really matter, right? Well, right now is actually a great time because of all the number ones. Right, so. right. But, but does Batman Beyond have anything to do with the 52 universe? It's just its own thing? Batman Beyond is the extension of the 52 universe. This is what so is that? It is that Tim Drake. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh. oh. I need a Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, so guys, we have we have a little bit less than a minute remaining. We want to be sure that you check out the music video that just got posted in the link. Watch it's called it. Right Now uh, from the band Never Let This Go. I believe the website is neverletthisgo.com. Um, you can check out the video via clicking on our link and be sure to download the song because it was awesome and sing it in the shower. Uh, somebody want to do the outro? Oh, bef yeah. like right before it, um, hit me up on Instagram if you want. Banks Boutte, B-A-N-K-S-B-O-U-T-T-E. Let's hang out. Banks yes. Boutte. There you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. The outro? You got 25 uh, seconds. Uh, you just been comic book showed. We're here yeah. every Wednesday at 9 p.m. PST. Every Tune in week. next week at TwinGalaxiesLive.com and check out our bite-sized episodes on Stanley's World of Heroes on Mondays. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and yeah. Hashtag dude party. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Next week. No, don't do that. Hashtag dude party. Dude, let's make it weird. No. <laughs> Three galaxies.